grade, I got sent to the principal's office because I talked too much. <laughs> Second grade, I had to redo my drawings because I colored outside the lines. Third grade, I got an F on my research paper because instead of writing about a real country, I made one up. <laughs> now, would you call this rebellion or creativity? Let me give you a background before you answer that question. You see, when I was growing up, my living room was very unusual. It was empty of furniture and full of toys. So my parents gave my brother and me all of the free time and free space that we needed. And we could do whatever we wanted, whether that was practicing violin, running around and screaming, or sitting still and just thinking. Now, in one corner, we had our Legos, where we could build our structures and be architects. And in another corner, we had our stuffed animals, where we could develop our own characters and storylines and be authors. And in another corner were our paint and brushes, where we could create our own masterpieces. Granted, this living room was not very presentable when we had guests over, but let me tell you this. It sure had an impact in helping me realize my creative mind. It made me a creative person. And schools can be like my living room, but a lot of people haven't realized it yet. Schools can be like my living room. They can give you the space and time to reach that creative mind. But students are getting caught up in memorizing vocab words, solving for X, regurgitating those historical facts. While there is value in these skills, stopping there leaves out our imagination. Ken Robinson said, Ted celebrates the gift of human imagination. And this is exactly what I believe education is about. It's about exploring your horizons, finding that job that you're passionate about. And each individual has the opportunity and the power to decide whether they want to be practical or pursue their passions. And we're often told, don't do art. It's not practical. Music? You're never going to make it. But I believe that our jobs and our futures should have that creative outlet. They should have playrooms, too. Now, education is about what we want to do. Maybe there's more to it than just taking a set route of classes to get that degree. I believe that there's a special importance to the journey and not just the destination. Now, I think that this may sound cliche, but it's something that we need to be taught. We need to be taught to be creative in the way that we build our relationships, the way that we serve our community, the way that we make friends, and ultimately, remember why we are here, to make a difference. There's so many big questions that could be asked, but oftentimes we don't have that mental playroom. We don't have the time to just sit there and think and ponder. Now, these questions may seem impractical, but at the same time, they could open up your imagination. They could be the key to unlocking that creative mind. For example, how do you know that you're awake right now? How do you know that your name is actually what you think your name is? How do you know that your friend sitting next to you isn't actually a figure from the past? And how do you know that humankind hasn't already developed a way to look into the future, but it's being withheld from the rest of us? Now, schools have this opportunity to develop this kind of thinking, but students are getting caught up in memorizing details for those multiple choice and, and free response questions. They have this tunnel vision, and they're ignoring their creative being. But we need this bridge between a traditional education and forward free thinking. Education is about encouraging you to define your own success. Find what you love. Some people choose to fill their playrooms with fancy furniture, and others choose to fill it with creativity. I choose to be a creative thinker, and I encourage you all to find the opportunity to play in your playroom. So go back to the image of the playroom. Find that playroom and go fill it.
Thank you.